Okay, this is gonna be the initial documentation for those folks that want to try and work with Mark at its new folder watching functionality. Um, for the time being, uh, the way that you will start uh, the watcher and stop it if you want to stop it. Uh, under help, there will be a section called watcher test. Um, start or end. Uh, long term, I might leave a placeholder to be able to start it as not a service. Um, that way it doesn't run um, between reboots. Uh, but the ultimate goal for something like this is to have this run um, so that you configure it, uh, tell it to enable, and it basically runs any time um, Windows boots up. Uh, so let's talk about how to get it set up. So in 7.1.5, so I will change the version number right now, it's uh, 1.2. Um, this is for uh, final testing, I'll pin it to 1.5 as the first version to publicly have this. Um, you will configure the watcher functionality by going to preferences. Um, inside the preferences, you'll see that the configure watcher is now enabled. And in this space is where you um, will tell the program uh, what you want to do um, with the uh, the watcher service. So uh, for right now, this checkbox doesn't do anything. Uh, check it, don't check it. Eventually, um, if the box is checked, the program will initiate the watcher as a service that runs when Windows boots up. Um, for right now, um, it's just there as a placeholder being saved um, in the settings, but uh, isn't actually being used to determine whether the watcher turns on or not. You have to manually turn it on in order to test. Uh, it has two modes. The first one is a continuous monitoring mode, in which case if you select this one, every 15 minutes the watcher will um, go and look at these profiles and check to see if any um, files have been placed into uh, the folder that it needs to be watching and will evaluate uh, the files that are there based on the criteria provided. If you only want the service to run once a day, um, you can set it to schedule a process and the watcher then will then schedule to a specific time um, and will run based on that time. So I'm going to go ahead and edit one so you can see what it looks like. So the watcher itself is fairly straightforward. There's a name, so this is used in the log file. Um, there's the folder where you expect um, data to go. So in this case, I have two watcher files. So I've put folders here in uh, vendor task and I've thrown 43 files in there. And then I copied uh, some more files and I threw them into vendor task two. Uh, so those are my two folders I'm watching. So this is for one of them. This one's watching vendor task. Um, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna match against all file names, so the tool's gonna use gonna to apply this criteria to all the file names in that folder. Um, if you enter any information here um, and leave it to all files, the tool will do an in-string match to determine whether the file name should be um, looked at. If you use a matching pattern, it uses a regular expression match to determine whether or not the file should be um, looked at. By and large, I would not recommend against having multiple watchers watching the same folder. Um, it gets a little messy. There are a number of um, threads that are running. Uh, I think I have all of the thread locking worked out. So if you do um, run uh, multiple watchers across the same folder, they shouldn't step on each other. Um, but right now, I would recommend it's just cleaner um, to have uh, if you're going to be having individual folders um, for individual watcher tasks and just have it process all file names, that seems to be the better option right now. Um, you can try it uh, by all means, test it. Um, if you notice that it steps on it, but it steps on itself, let me know. Um, I'm doing that testing as well because uh, I wanted to make sure it worked first, uh, and then I'll do a little bit more granular work. Um, the output folder is where it's going to save the the output after all of the uh, processing is done. And then these right here are the tasks that I've attached. Right now, um, if I wanted to add a new task, I'd select task and then hit select. The, right now, the drop-down list only has task. Eventually, I'll be adding more functionality 
that can be added to the watcher folder. So for example, I've heard things like um, uh, uh, character encoding conversion. So moving from Mark 8 to UTF-8 automatically or um, converting formats. So somebody drops a bunch of XML files and they automatically convert to Mark for pickup. Um, so uh, those will get done um, later. Uh, right now I just wanted to get something working so that I could get folks, uh, folks would have an opportunity to start testing it. And um, by the time it turns into a full-fledged service, uh, I anticipate having the uh, conversion part, so being able to convert formats and probably character conversions um, into the tool as well. Uh, so anyways, you, just, you decide, you define your, your, um, your watcher and then you save it. And when you save it, it gets put into this list. Um, for the purposes of this video, so you can see how it works, I'm gonna go ahead and schedule a task. That way I can see it run. So right now my clock says, my system clock, and it goes by your system clock, says it's 9.51. So I am gonna run this at 9.53 a.m. So I will go ahead and tell it okay. And so that goes ahead and saves the, uh, the configuration file. And then I just need to start the watcher. Um, so I go ahead and start it up. And so at this point, I don't need Mark Edit running anymore. So the watcher is running. So this right here is the watcher service. Um, inside the watcher service, you can pull settings, view logs, or exit the watcher service from here. So at this point, it's going to just sit there and run. So I'm going to go here, get rid of a few of these things, uh, because um, what you'll get to see is you'll get to see how the watcher um, uh, kicks out um, notifications. So the watcher service is going to log a lot of messages. So basically every time it performs an operation, um, it's going to log messages. If there are errors during the watcher process, it's going to log it into the log file. Um, and as things are completed, it will uh, kick things out as a toast. So in Windows 10, toasts go into the notification space. In Windows uh, earlier version of Windows, I think they'll show up um, as balloons up here instead of as a toast. So here we see some toasts. So here you'll see as the watcher service is completing things, it's putting a notification saying that it's completed specific files. And if a file doesn't process, it'll tell you that that file hasn't processed. So if we go back over to our watched folders, what we'll see is there's an originals folder that gets created. So the originals folder um, is a special folder that MarkEdit creates to drop um, the original file record that was the original uh, file into that set. That way it doesn't get lost. So as it processes data through um, the uh, task, it drops the, the, the folder there, uh, the record there, and then into uh, it pulls it out of the watched folder and then it drops the results into wherever the output folder was that was defined. So in one of the watchers it was defined as output 2, in one of the watcher services it was defined as vendor output. So to each watcher service is dropping the individual file results into these spaces. You can see that it's running. So the way that the watcher service runs, it runs as a background process, so it's not going to be as fast as running mark at it directly. Uh, so if we open the task manager, um, let's see, the task manager gets booted up here. Uh, you'll see that inside of the mark at it space, uh, the watcher service is running that the CPU right now is flexed probably because of uh, most likely it's a um, antivirus thing because it's going to be checking new files to get created. But you see that MarkEdit itself um, is keeping the CPU rate fairly low um, even through the various processes. So in the application, when the application runs, MarkEdit actually flexes the CPU higher. Um, it pushes the threads um, into a higher priority. For the watcher service, it pulls them back as a background process. And so right now I have nothing else going on. 
and so it uses more CPU. But if I started doing anything, that number would drop down um, into a smaller number, somewhere into around four to six percent, and then it just takes more time for that for it to run. You can actually open Mark Edit while the watcher service is running. The two are um, completely independent of each other, and you can do work in Mark Edit while the watcher service is completing its work, and then come back um, to it if you want to. So um, right now the watcher service is still finishing. Let's see where how close we are to done. So we'll look here. We can see that most of the files, most of the 43 files, have been processed in one of them. Other, all of them are done. So the program is running um, in a threaded environment. There are multiple tasks that get generated, and the tool then just processes them as they go. So you'll see that it's continuing to sort through the individual spaces. Larger files, again, take longer because we go back into that background processing space. So in this case, when this is all done, the watcher service will have processed roughly about 86 files. Um, if you remember, we started the watcher service at 9.53. Um, right now, we're four minutes into that, um, and it's still, you know, completing its work. So probably for those 43 records, if I had to guess, it's probably going to take about seven or eight minutes to complete all of, the, uh, all of the processing that happens. And there are actually two files in this set that won't complete. Um, this one right here. Um, will end up failing during the process. And I'll show you in the log what that looks like. And the reason it's going to fail is because the output in the um, file, uh, the task that I, I've set up, actually will munge this file. So when it tries to recompile the mark uh, mnemonic file back into mark at its mark format, it's going to have some trouble. And so rather than kill the watcher, it's going to flag it inside the log file as an error um, that then you can go and evaluate later if you're if you needed to see what was going on. Um, so let's look and see. Uh, so we can go back. So again, um, uh, one of the watchers is finished. So we have all of our output files here. This is the one that's still running. So there's 36 here. So the one that's finished is this one. We have all 43 of our files here. They've been run through the two tasks that I designated in this watcher service. In the other watcher service, I designated three tasks. And so we're up to 41 files complete. So that means it's probably just the last two. Yeah, one of them that won't, well, that will air out, and the other one that will finish because it's just a mnemonic file, so there's no compilation that happens at the end. All right, so let's start looking at what's going on. So if we look at the notification service over here, you can see that it's continuing to drop data in, and hopefully the one that fails will show next. You can see uh, what the failed record set looks like. Uh, let's see here. I'm waiting for that one to finish. Oh, and log files, just so you know. So we'll we'll run them through the program, but I might as well show you where they get saved. So the log files are being saved underneath the uh, in the mark edit traditional log file location. So there is inside configs, there's a log file. This is the watcher file that's being created. It'll get flushed at the end. Um, because logs are uh, since this is all threaded, there's a um, a variable that's being locked. Um, over and over again uh, so that um, the application again doesn't step on itself and is able to um, complete the process. So the one that shouldn't complete has finished. So you'll see uh, this one's been done. Watch your name. It completed, but this right here, file processing cannot be completed on this file. So that is, um, if I seen that, I, would, I could look in the log file and see what the process was. So you can see that it's finished everything. So the last thing is done and then the last notification you get is that the watcher cycle is completed and it's initiating a new cycle. So all of the files have been processed, all the threads have been completed and so now the application has gone to sleep and will reawaken 
um, at 9.53 a.m. tomorrow morning to see if there are any new files to be processed. Um, if I put it into the continuous 15 minute mode, then what happens is the watcher will pause the count when it starts running. And then when the complete, when the watchers completed all of the operations um, for that session, then it reinitiates the watcher service. And then in 15 minutes, it does it all again. Uh, so here we can go to our log and you can see um, all of the things that were accomplished here um, in the log file. And if I need to, I can copy that log file um, and paste it somewhere else if it makes it easier to find stuff, and it probably will, because in this case it's a, a large log file, but you can see all of the information that's being captured along the way. Um, some of this is information for me, debugging information sometimes. It's, uh, information specifically for the user, um, but I try and provide as much information here um, as possible. So in this case, this file here, uh, this is the one that the errors. So if you look here, you'll see that the watcher file um, error during compilation, you get an error code negative 500. This is likely a formatting error. So inside of the tool, it's telling you what's happening as it goes along. Um, that's it. So the watcher files run. Now you have two ways to shut the watcher service off. Um, you can either right click on it and tell it to exit um, if you've started it manually or even if you've run it as a um, service. Uh, the other option is uh, under help, watcher test, end watcher, and this will tell you what the ID of the service is. Tell it yes, process is shut down, and that's it. Watcher service has been closed. It's no longer watching my folder. Um, and for testing purposes, um, if I wanted to run it again, I would have to go back in and start the watcher. Um, like I said, uh, for testing purposes, um, I'm having folks set this up, uh, have to actually manually start the watcher. So it will not right now turn itself on as a service. Um, I'm gonna let folks work with it and test it for a little while. Once um, I have heard that uh, it sounds like it's working um, within the parameters that uh, uh, we've kind of set up here, then I will um, start having the program um, uh, go ahead and uh, respect that value that uh, in the preferences that tells you to enable the watcher service, in which case the program will drop the service into um, the uh, the key the Windows queue and when the applicant when Windows boots um, it will initiate that watcher service um, on a per user session um, it won't actually drop it into the the true Windows service is going to run as a as an application that that runs on startup and this is being done partly so that users don't have to be administrators in order to um, get the service set up and run uh, so anyways that's kind of what this looks like. Uh, if you have questions, uh, let me know.